Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Come on, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving. Anybody thankful this morning? I said, anybody thankful this morning? Thankful for another day to enter God's house and give him thanks because he's been good. Has he been good to anybody? Anybody just want to say thank you, God, on this second week in January? Thank you because it's not as bad as it could be. Thank you that I see your blessings flowing. Come on, somebody, just one more time. Let's give God thanks. So we enter his gates with thanksgiving, but we enter his courts with a whole different thing. Come on, somebody, say hallelujah. Come on, let me hear what praise sounds like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we enter in with a few worship songs, and we just invite you to just grab it and use it as a way to worship God for yourself personally. Pants 
it for the water so my soul longeth after thee come on say it with me you alone you alone are my heart's desire and I long oh how I long to worship, I long to worship thee come on right where you are lift it up as the deer your neighbor sing it to the Lord you alone
Come on, keep your hands together. Come on, you're already standing. You might as well just stay up. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on, let's lift the name of the Lord. Hey, Lord, I lift your name on high. If you know it, help me say it. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Come on. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. Come on, let's stay right there one more time. Confess it with your mouth. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Is it true? Lord, I love to sing your praises. Come on, wave your hand one time if you're glad he's in your life. Come on. Anybody over here glad he came to save you? Ah, come on. You came from heaven. Just to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Just say that one more time. Come on. Lift it up, Lord. I lift your name. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad. So glad you're in my life, and I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven, just to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. Stay right there, lift it up. You came from heaven. Just to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name. Oh, oh, you came just to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Your name. Just one more time. No music. Lift it up. Come on. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth. Ah, yeah. To show the Come way on now. from the earth to the cross. My death to live from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. To the sky. I hear y'all want to sing that one more time. One more time. Come on. You came from heaven. Just to show the way from the earth to the cross. All of my debts you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name because you're worthy. Lord, I lift your name because you've been good. Lord, I lift your name. Time after time after time, you made a way so you're so good. You're so good, so I lift your name. Anybody want to help me lift his name on high? Hey, Lord, I lift your name on high. Hey, Lord, I lift your name on high. On high. I am lifted up in all.
together. Come on. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we praise you. 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 Because you're good, oh Lord, because you're merciful, oh Lord, because you're kind, oh Lord, oh Lord because you made a way oh each and every oh day. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, one more time. Come on. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. you've done for me. I can't help myself. I've got to praise you. You blessed me over and over. gathered together to worship the one who created us, who sustains us, who redeems us and calls us his own. If you are able, I invite you to stand as we read our scripture lesson for this morning found in Isaiah chapter 55. I'll begin reading in verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. 
it will not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish the thing for which I pur purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Here is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning as we prepare to offer up our invocation, that part in the service where we invite God's spirit even though we know God is already here. Before we do that, we want to remember there are those in this congregation who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. There are folks who are here, but they're distracted by the burdens that they bear. And so as we enter into worship, we want to lift these names up. We want to remember Sydney Simon and Linda Leet as they grieve the death of Michelle Leet, daughter and mother. We pray for Stacy Walker, grieving the death of her father, Ralph Evans. For Monica Spruill in the loss of Bertille Lewis, her mother. And for Jimmy Ogletree, Michelle Silvertooth Jackson as they grieve the loss of Angela Ogletree. And for Teresa Gaines, grieving the loss of Jane Gaines, her mother and Sonia Osinloye in the loss of a cousin, Ruth Seely Jackson. Sisters and brothers, here are the names on my list. Who else are we praying for today? Amen. 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 Let us pray. God, we come before you this morning, humble as we know how. With thankful hearts, we are so delighted, God, we get to just come into your presence. We get to enter your gates with thanksgiving and come into your courts with praise. We thank you, God, for the opportunity and the blessing that comes when we get to worship you today. And Lord, as we assemble here in this space and online, Lord, we know there are those who are carrying heavy burdens. We lift up to you those who are grieving, God, those who are struggling to breathe because the burden is so great. We offer up to you, God, those who are suffering all kinds of loss, confusion, uncertainty. We're here, God, because we may not know the answer, but we know if we can just get close to you, that our situations can change. We come with expectant hearts and ask that your spirit will facilitate worship today, that every person in this space and online, that every person who has a part of this service will yield themselves to your spirit and let your spirit have its way in our hearts and lives. We want to avail ourselves to make your name great. We want to open ourselves up to you, God, so that you can do what only you can do. Fix us, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We invite you to stand or remain standing for the singing of our congregational hymn, The Solid Rock.
the solid rock that is Christ, we stand flat-footed as we share God's peace with one another.
I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind, but I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian or if I can bring salvation to a world once wrought, if I can spread the message as the master taught, then my living will not be in vain. As we remember and celebrate the legacy of Martin Luther King, I'm always struck by the stories we tell. There's certain words of Martin Luther King that re get repeated over and oh, we know them all by heart. There's certain lines, certain stories, and then there are all those people who tell you, I marched with Martin Luther King. I was there. These stories we tell that we share because they shape our identity about who we are as a people. We're a part of this legacy. And this morning, as we celebrate the ordinance of communion, we tell the same story. It's the same story that centers who we are. We are a people redeemed. We are a people so loved that God sent his only son to offer the supreme sacrifice for us. And every time we tell that story, we are transformed. And so I invite you now, if you are in the audience here, to prepare your elements for communion. If you do not have communion elements, please raise your hand so that the deacons may attend to you. As those of you who are online, get your elements of communion together so that we can partake as one body. Years from now, anthropologists are going to have a whole bunch of reasons for why people did this before they took communion. And um, <laughs> today we remember that on the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he sat at table with his disciples. He took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Eat you all of it. Let us eat together. The Bible says in like manner after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for the remission of sins. As often as you drink this, Whenever you drink this, you do so proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us drink together. God, we thank you that we have a story, a story of redemption that reminds us we are beloved, we are redeemed, we are justified, we are made right. Now, God, help us not to forget this moment. Help us to move in this world knowing who we are in you and to do so with thankful hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, saints. I welcome you to worship this morning, and I want to take this opportunity first thing to welcome the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority who are worshiping with us this morning as they anticipate their Founders Day. With the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, please stand. Amen. 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 
You look beautiful, and we're so glad to have you together worshiping with us this morning. God bless you. I also want to recognize Discipleship Group 37, which is worshiping together in the balcony. Would you please stand? Amen. Amen. Welcome. And I'd love to recognize anyone who's celebrating a birthday this week. Do we have any birthdays this week? Here's one, Minister Paul. Hello, happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday. We are of the mind that every time God blesses us with a birthday, we wanna pause and say it didn't have to be. We thank God for the gift of another year. Happy birthday to you all. And we'd love to celebrate any wedding anniversaries we have. Is there anyone celebrating another year of successful marriage this week? Amen. Okay. We'll start up in the balcony. How many years? Is that what your shirt says? Oh, I love that. Okay. Can you... Okay, I can't, what else does it say? Can you tell us what it says? Celebrating 27 years of marriage. What's the small print? No, underneath, no, there's something. It's a line. All right, praise God. Congratulations. I just want to make sure. How many years? You all are witnesses that God is able, and we celebrate you, and we continue to pray your strength in the Lord. God bless you. I have a few things by way of announcements. Yesterday, for our seminary Saturday, we were blessed to have Dr. Juan Floyd Thomas come as our guest lecturer. Were any of you here yesterday? We had a good time in the Lord with some dynamic conversation. We continue in that series and invite you back this coming Saturday when we welcome author and international human rights attorney Jonathan Kutab, who will be with us this Saturday. And in a very short amount of time, eight days, our Sikh journey will begin. Amen. So for 21 days, we will fast, and you have some options. You can fast um, away from social media. You can fast from social media. You can have a financial fast. You can have a fast that involves what you put in your mouth and how you move your body. And we're encouraging you to elect as many as the Spirit leads you to do. And we take this one day at a time. We do this together, and we are always amazed at what God does in the life of this congregation. So we invite you to prepare yourself. You've got eight days to get the rest of this stuff out of your system. Go ahead, get it done. And then next week we're going to get together and prepare to start on Monday. Amen? Amen. Um, our administrative offices will be closed this coming Tuesday, January 16th. And we want to invite you to remember that although we do not lift up a formal offering, we are a congregation that trusts that you understand the importance of faithful giving. We celebrate over and over again all of the wonderful things Alfred Street is able to do. And let's be clear, we're able to do these things because you are saying yes to God and being obedient in your giving. And so we offer a number of ways to give. We want to invite you to remember to be faithful because you know what God can do when we entrust God with our goods. God will multiply into amazing things in this world. Amen? Amen? All right. So there's only one thing left to say, and that is that we have an amazing guest preacher this morning. And I am so excited um, because the Reverend Dr. Stacy Floyd Thomas is someone for whom I've had admiration for so many years. Um, because of her work, 
and her witness. And we are delighted that she is our preacher today. We're delighted that she's here with her husband, Dr. Juan Floyd Thomas, who was here with us yesterday. And let me tell y'all something, together they are hilarious. Um, so those of you who have had any chance to spend some time with them, thank you for the gift that you bring to us in your gifts and in your presence. God bless you. We will see a video introducing our preacher. Then we will hear once again from our amazing male chorus. And then we will hear from our preacher for this morning. God bless you. It is with great pleasure we welcome Dr. Stacy M. Floyd Thomas to Alfred Street Baptist Church this morning. Dr. Floyd Thomas is the E. Rhodes and Leona B. Carpenter Chair and Professor of Ethics and Society and teaches within the Black Church Studies Program at Vanderbilt University Divinity School. She's also a proud member and executive staff pastor and theologian in residence at the legendary Friendship West Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas. While teaching at Vanderbilt University's Divinity School, Dr. Floyd Thomas has taught various courses, including Womanist Theory and Ethics, African American Social Ethics, women's bodies, global issues, and religious ethics to help prepare critical thinkers, future authors, and inspiring leaders. The author of two books, Mining the Mother Load, Methods in Womanist Ethic, and the forthcoming When the Good Life Goes Bad, The Seven Deadly Sins in the Trump Era. Dr. Floyd Thomas is a leading scholar and highly sought after lecturer who's taught and lectured throughout the U.S. and in West Africa, Brazil, England, Egypt, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Italy, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. The highly educated Dr. Floyd Thomas holds a remarkable academic resume. She obtained a bachelor's from Vassar College and a master of theological studies from Emory University, a master's and PhD from Temple University, and an MBA from Tennessee State University. She's married to Dr. Juan Floyd Thomas, and they share a daughter, Lillian Makeda, in their labor of love. After the choir selection, we'll be blessed to hear the dynamic voice of Dr. Dr. Stacy Floyd Thomas. Alfred Street, please give her a warm welcome. Just be 
steadfast Just be faithful that the Lord hath made. 
I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, saints, but when 2024 came about, I know a lot of people were saying it's a new year and they were trying to figure out if they could be happy about it. But we as the saints among the midst of saints know that when we hold on and not let go, Emmanuel is with us, giving honor to God the author and finisher of my faith to the beloved appointed and anointed angel of this house, Pastor Howard John Wesley in his absence. I don't know what y'all know, but when you have a church like Alfred Street, it's a place where you don't wanna leave the sacred desk because this is a sweet, sweet place. And some Negroes might wanna hijack it. <laughs> for themselves. If we could steal some Holy Ghost, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? So to my brother beloved in his absence and the fierce solidarity and fortitude support of his august associate in the form of my sister scribe and beloved sword, none other than the Reverend Dr. Judy Fentress Williams. to the executive excellent assistance of the ministerial support team, especially Tiffany Diggs, <laughs> Janae McLaren, Joe Webb, to my pulpit associates, and to you, the awesome, astute audience that represents the members and friends of the one and only Alfred Street Baptist Church. I, along with my family, my beloved husband of 26 years, Dr. Juan Floyd Thomas. Yes, he married me in vitro. Many of you witnessed in yesterday's Seminary Saturday's class on the heresy of our crisis of faith and facts in the Middle East. You realize why some down in Texas and Tennessee and in New Jersey and in Georgia and around the World Wide Web call him Wikiwan because he has a bounty of brilliance and faith to match it. So he, along with our 15-year-old daughter, who is streaming us, Lillian Makeda, in her absence, who is the sweetest fruit of our love and labor, and on behalf of our home church in the wild, wild west, Friendship West Baptist Church, where my pastor and God brother beloved, the Reverend Dr. Freddie D. Haynes III, is telling me, don't you dare go and love those folk more than you love me. I love our home church where I had the privilege to serve as theologian in residence. And on behalf of Vanderbilt Divinity School where I serve as a carpenter chair of ethics and professor of ethics and society, there in Tennessee we call ourselves the School of the Prophets because we're fastened by the buckle of the Bible belt in Nashville that bleeds red while some of us are singing the blues. We greet you, my fellow workers in Christ, for your true presence. Truly, this is the day that the Lord hath made, but not only made, but graced us with, because it's a day not promised. It's a day where the elders used to say, it's good to be seen, saints, and not viewed. So let us rejoice and be glad in it as we go to the throne of grace, if you bow with me. Dear God, this is once again your sheepish yet not shy child, Stacy, who humbly and wisely owns that thou art the potter, I am your clay. Mold me and make me after thy will because I am waiting, I'm yielding. I'm still. Send a seraphim with a coal from around your altar to sear and seal my lips so the words that I say may not be yours. I mean, might not be mine, but may be yours and approved in your sight. And let that word go forth as fire so our hearts and minds might be as wood, so we might be consumed with only understanding as we are commissioned to do justice, 
love kindness, and walk humbly with you as we carry your word. Amen. Our scripture today is taken from parts of chapter 11 and 12 of Hebrews. On the screen, here as I read. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The convictions of things not seen. For by it, men and women of old receive divine approval. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our God, our God, our God. is a consuming fire. This still is the word of God for you, God's people. Thanks be to God. In her classic novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God, Celebrated author and our patron saint of womanist thought, Zora Hill Hurston reminds us, there are years that ask questions and there are years that answer. Hurston's words speak to our souls today, for in this brand new year of 2024, we are seemingly cautious as we exit 2023, which was inundated by the ambiguity of auspicious anniversaries rooted in the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. On the one hand, this past year, we observed the 55th anniversary of King's assassination in Memphis, where he had the holy boldness to stand in solidarity with black sanitation workers who had the audacity to insist that they were humans even though they made their living disposing of trash. And on the other hand, we observed just a few months ago, the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington at the Lincoln Memorial on the National Mall down the street in Washington, D.C. We know all too well that historic moment where the landmark speech that King gave that day in which he heralded for all the whole world to hear, I have a dream, a dream that refused to be trampled underfoot and buried into the red clay dirt of Georgia and Alabama from which my parents held. And with that dream, held in the faith of death-dealing devastation, he said, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted, he said, with the fierce urgency of now in this unfolding conundrum of life and history. There is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy or complacency, he said. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. Unquote. In the decades since Dr. King shared his urgent utterances with the world, people love hearing the sanitized sound bites of his I Have a Dream speech about little black children and little white children holding hands and being so precious in his sight as if the proximity of blackness to whiteness brings about equality. That if stringy blonde heads touch nappy black heads, 
Some common sense and intelligence might pour from one into the other. But those of us who's been kissed by the sun know that wasn't the substance of his speech. That's only the shadow they want to sell and package for you to remember. In that speech, Dr. King made an unapologetic and unashamed clarion call for racial and social justice where the phrase, the fierce urgency of now, is not only provocative, but prophetic. And it is still a call that those gathered on that day in the 1960s before I was born needed to heed. And we too need to respond and answer today. So consider with me the sermonic topic for today, the fierce urgency of our faith. The fierce urgency of our faith. Amen. Truly we are exacerbated with our mourning and the enormous toll it has taken on so many lives. We often quote the pithy profundity of Hebrews 11 and one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm, yet this badge and brand of our religious platform rarely takes note of the fact that here, in this verse, and perhaps in our very incarnation of it, faith and lies share the same definition. Let me repeat that. And hear the verse again. Now faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things nobody has seen Faith and lies share an epistemic root. Lies that present themselves as fear-mongering, that is, false evidence appearing real, is also the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Likewise, the adage, hindsight is 2020" is a hopeful sentiment rather than an established truth. Soaring Kierkegaard's theological inflection on this aphorism extols that life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Mm, predicated on the never-ending future, it presupposes the privileged position that we're always moving ahead in logical and linear manner with the added benefit that time is always on one side. This perspective denotes the opportunities afforded to someone who routinely has the luxury of reflecting upon time gone by to chart one's future. But what about those who incessantly must look back and peripherally process as they're compelled to move forward in real time and do an alley-oop in times of devastation, despair, or distress? We realize that for those on the margin of society, faith from hindsight does not simply refer to learning from one's past, but also living with one's past in such a way as to gain immediate insight that is crucial for instantaneous foresight. There is much to be said about engaging the troubles of our current era while also enduring them. So today, we are doubling down on that most tender and tenacious human endeavor, hope. Yeah, yeah. Arguably, what fueled Dr. King's face was a resolved optimism based on his belief in God's guiding hand in the work of human history and the eventual realization of social progress in America based on confronting the trials and travails of a flawed, fragile democracy. King demonstrates this most clearly when he contends that people have, and I quote, the capacity to do right as well as wrong, and our history is a path upward and not downward. The past is strewn with the ruins of the empires of tyranny, and each is a mon monument not merely to humanity's blunders, 
but to our capacity to overcome them. This is why I remain an optimist, he says, though I am also a realist about the barriers before us. Why is the issue of equality still so far from the solution in America, a nation that professes itself to be democratic, inventive, hospitable to new ideas, richly productive and awesomely powerful? The problem is so tenacious because despite its virtues and attributes, America, he said, is deeply racist. And its democracy is flawed both economically and socially. Justice for black people cannot be achieved without radical changes in the structure of our society, exposing evils that are, rootly deep, that are rooted deeply in the whole structure of our society. It reveals systemic rather than superficial flaws and suggests that radical reconstruction of society itself is the real issue to be faced. You never heard that in a Hallmark card, have you? Uh, he says, it is time that we stopped our blithe lip service to the guarantees of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He said, these fine sentiments are embodied in the Declaration of Independence, but that document was always a declaration of intent rather than of reality, unquote. There still is a fierce urgency to make about what was promised in this nation because it's yet to be made manifest. Because now not only the death dealing ravages of a virus and the deadening blows of police violence and political unrest haunt us, but also the virulent hate that seeks to erase the true king from our textbooks, our history from our classrooms, our witty inventions and genius from our campuses across this nation, but it is also that which keeps black boys and men imprisoned, black families broken, and black women on their backs and on their knees to save their family, and whose lives and livelihoods are being cut short from white ream extremism, patriarchy, and noir. Oh, we have created an unrelenting search for clarity and certainty amid the increasing complexity around the world. The truth of the matter is we can neither survive nor flourish in many of these instances. And yet the questions remain unresolved. And the lessons to be drawn from all these consuming crises go unlearned. And we, not merely as collaborators, community organizers, or citizens try to negotiate a world discolored and marred that judges character and competence along the racist continuum of honorary whiteness and dishonorable blackness. But we as children of God in the Christian church, we must take Kelly Brown Douglas's query seriously and ask ourselves, what does faith got to do with it? As I stand in this fabulous house of worship, nestled here in lovely red brick Alexandria, Virginia, just a stone's throw from the nation's capital, I can recall how more than 20 years ago, the terrible and tragic events of one autumn morning retained a singularly solemn importance as both a physical and psychic scar upon this city that in turn had an indelible impact upon our recent history and popular memory in downtown Manhattan, but also the Pentagon in DC, there we suffered a horrendous terrorist attack by foreign enemies that claimed the lives of nearly 3,000 people that fateful day. In those spaces, we not only remember the deceased, but also the surviving families, partners, parents and children of those who died that fateful Tuesday morning in September. We must be ever mindful how the 9-11 terror attacks lit the spark of full-fledged military conflicts to eliminate the Taliban in Afghanistan and to uncover non-existence. The non-existent weapons of mass destruction in Iraq a war that was made because a faithful son believed in avenging his father's honor rather than protecting the lives he was elected to protect. Yeah. 
yet I'm also pressed to remember and would be a lying preacher if I failed to recall that little more than three years ago, those folks who got infected with MAGA fever had their own epiphany and decided on the first Wednesday in January of 2021, they were going to finish the task of tearing down America as homegrown terrorists attempted to do what foreign-born enemies could not achieve because they tore us down from within even chasing down a black man who was trying to be a good man, who knew the only way to stop them was to use his black body as bait. As we roll into this year of our Lord 2024 and look towards the upcoming election, the words of the brilliant young poet Amanda Gorman should stay forever fresh on our minds. In her poem, The Hill We Climb, she said, quote, we've seen a force that should shatter our nation rather than share it would destroy our country if it meant to lame democracy, yeah. unquote. Much like the tumultuous era that King and his compatriots lived through, we also find our lifetimes caught up in the grip of perilous and peculiar times. In this regard, I echo the sentiments of social ethicist and King biographer and your fellow member, Michael Eric Dyson, who says, if January 15th, 1929 is a holiday celebration trumpeting the arrival of a prophet, then April 4th, 1968 is a day that directly confronts the sorrows and deaths we must forever negotiate." Unquote. What death are we negotiating, you may ask? Without provocation. We know all too well that the dawn of 2024 has all of us in need of more faith than ever after suffering so much loss. Just four years ago, we all had our sights focused on 2020, the year that promised clear vision and great awakening. We were standing at tiptoe stance with great expectation for the new year, new you and the new year that was promised to all of us, yet no sooner. Look at your neighbor and say, yet no sooner. Uh, then the year rolled in we were flatlined with the death-dealing COVID-19 virus. Only to be dealt the death blow of virulent racism in the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor amidst the many names we don't know. And then many of us found ourselves hemorrhaging from seemingly soul murder and spiritual genocide because a stay-at-home mandate forbade us to assemble ourselves together. So we broke crackers and grape juice and lamented what we used to complain about and did anything to share our pew and our reserved seat so we could get back to the church family in the red brick and mortar buildings. Our black church, huh? The one place where many of us find a real lived sanctuary where anybody who the world considers to be nobody can come and be seen as somebody because God made them black and beautiful and not by accident because we were made in the very image of God's self. And still again. For those of us who survive the so-called seasons that pass and even the summer of racial reckoning in 2020, how much of anger and anxiety and animus of that historic moment still remains at the core of our collective consciousness? Without the passage of federal and state le level legislation such as the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act of 2020, we are still waiting for social reforms beyond scrubbing racist stereotypes from sports team logos and taking Gladys Knight renditions of Aunt Jemima off of our grocery store items. Well, somehow, we now find ourselves in a post Roe versus Wade American society, which is startling not only because the US Supreme Court decision was settled law, which might have been highly contested, but was overturned by at least four conservative Supreme Court justices who swore they would never overturn it uh, until they did. We have faith in liars. 
Uh, we've also dealt with climate-based catastrophes with greater frequency and increasing potency. We have scourges rising, raging from mile-wide meteorites to massive wildfires to monkeypox to murder hornets. Do y'all remember the murder hornets? All as part of a universe trying to let us know that we're not in charge of anything. But unlike the beloved community that Dr. King saw in the last years of his life, the right under the control of Trump and Trumpism now fully embraces our nation's worst impulses rather than its best ideals. Now I know it's been a few years, but too many people tend to forget precisely how horrible the miserable, misbegotten Trump presidency was. DeSantis is trying to remind you of it. A daily chaos where all the news was always breaking blatant abuses of power, endless political scandals by his hand-picked cabinet members, clear pandering to far-right religious zealots and white supremacists, weaponization of the federal government for personal vendettas, degradation and devaluation of our political process, and the non-stop attacks on the rights of women, people of color, queer folk, immigrants, journalists, medical experts, the working poor, the physical physically challenged, non-Christian people, the military, their families, and every other group in this nation. Personally, when I'm forced to think about the tangerine nightmare, <laughs> Cheeto Dusty, cheating charlatan known as Donald J. Trump. I'm reminded of him as a notoriously sketchy businessman, twice divorced husband, or maybe three times, because I don't know if anybody's seen Melania lately, <laughs> and failed former reality television star who later became a disgraced, defeated, twice impeached, and quadruple indicted former president with approximately 91 felony counts. The only way he can stay out of jail is if he makes his way back into the White House. You better vote, my children. Now it is easy to argue that at least part of the reasons Trump's time in the White House was such a hot mess the last time was because he never expected to win. He and his cronies were embarrassingly unprepared and unapologetically trifling as they repeatedly blew off and or failed at some of the most normal activities expected of a president and his team to run the government. In one extremely comical scene in Michael Lewis's nonfiction book called The Fifth Risk, the writer describes how in early 2017, the Trump crew was so pathetic, they held meetings in the dark because they literally didn't know how the lights worked at the White House. And yet he becomes the white God that people trust. Hard as it is to believe as a result of this combination of raw ignorance and utter incompetence, Trump's administration was somewhat limited in how much damage it could do, not only to the nation, but to the whole world as he and his minions slinked away from DC. But if there was ever any doubt that another Trump administration will be even worse, I'm begging you to remember that Donald Trump said the quiet part out loud when he stated on stage during his keynote speech at the 2023 Conservative Political Action Committee Conference, quote, for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution, unquote. So much like the road to hell is paved with good intentions, the road to fascism and tyranny is paved with people telling you there is nothing to worry about because it's not as bad as you think. Even here is one place where I take a challenge with King who said that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Oh, Brother King, you're wrong. 
because it won't lean unless we do the bending. Black people of good faith, we need to stay woke and not asleep while driving by allowing Jesus to take the wheel. The fierce urgency of our faith is akin to Paul's sensibility in 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 of seeing through a glass darkly and that we are searching for God through a looking glass because we cannot trust our own sight. Paul's letter to the Christian church of Corinth is not simply poetic for him, but it is a corrective insight that seeing doesn't always lead to believing. If anyone knew this fact, it should have been the man formerly known as Saul of Tarsus. But your associate pastor can tell you that. It's often when we can't rely on our own worldview or eyesight in the life's journey that God's glory is truly seen. So much so that it blinds us as it did Saul to who we once were so we can see a clear who we might need to be. And God opens a world and opens us to a new second sight, wherein as Henry David Thoreau insightfully said, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see by faith. Our Hebrew epistle lesson shows us that just as those cloud of witnesses are our saintly ancestors, we are the, tr they're the children of their wildest dreams and answered prayers. So to hope, is a parent of faith. Conversely, hope that does not breed faith is not only fruitless, but it makes liars out of us. Great was the faith of those saints from Moses to Martin, Hagar to Harriet, from the Hebrew slaves in the wilderness to those enslaved in the Middle Passage, from the immigrants who made their way to Ellis Island over a hundred years ago, to the migrants and refugees who have risked life and limb to make their way to the U.S.-Mexico border, to the yearning activists and protesters to peacefully transform dictatorships into democracies, whether they be in Israel, Iran, Russia, China, even here in the U.S., hope is the seed from whence every move towards a truly humane world grows and flourishes. As a drum major for justice and the apostle of American democracy, Dr. King famously spoke a great truth on that sunlit August afternoon during the 1963 March on Washington when he stated, with this faith, we will be able to hew out of our mountain of despair, a stone of hope. As King reminds us, much like our Christian walk and God talk, faith in American democracy means belief in its victory to triumph over fear, suffering, disappointment, and hatred. Our fierce urgency of faith then must link divine justice to social justice and must save souls without losing minds and lives in the balance. So many saints that have gone on before us were commended for their faith, and many did not receive what was promised, except for us, their greatest hope of all. And without us, their work and witness will not be made whole, and their living and lynchings would have happened in vain. Can you hear them calling out to us this morning? A morning they were denied, and where we are left behind, Covered, covered in their hope. Can't you hear their hope as they holler out to us? You come out from all your mourning of our death and instead memorialize our faith. Face the rising sun of a new day begun because you only die once. So wisely and fiercely and faithfully choose life every day. What is the urgency of our faith? Simply put, we need saints to rise above the masses of ants and conform to the challenges that our life in real time present. When the hounds of hell are on our heels, we must hide hope in our hearts and put our hands in the hands of the one who understands our needs. 
What is that urgency of faith? You may recall the woman with the issue of blood in Luke 8, 43 through 48. A sister with a bad case of fibroids that turned into endometriosis and found herself 12 years a slave to her condition and a hidden figure in the masses. When her fringe benefits of health care ran out and the medical experts couldn't find out what was wrong with her and her friends tiptoed out and her society shut her out and called her unclean, so fierce was her urgency of faith that she said to herself, I don't need the H-I-M to see me if I can just touch the H-E-M. Yeah. Huh? I believe it'll do. My sisters, don't look for a man to work your plan. But hold on to the fringes of your faith. You might remember the Syrophoenician woman of Mark 7, 26, who Matthew 15, 22, I prefer that rendition, wants you to know she is a Canaanite, hashtag black like me, who had a daughter in desperate need of care that she alone could not provide. So with her mind on her mission and her mission on her mind, she interrupted Jesus' vacation and his meal with his homeboys and asked him to help her daughter who was vexed with the devil. And Jesus tells her, the folks say you are set up. In fact, you are shut out of the privileges that are only meant for the children of Israel. In fact, you are relegated not only as a second class citizen, but some folk might say, looking like a Palestinian, you might be a dog. And she replied, unfettered, unfazed, unrelenting. True that. But my small mind tells me that even the dogs, even the dogs get the crumbs from the master's table. And I believe the crumbs will do. So too, just a mustard seed of faith and misdoubt will serve you well too. Recall in Mark 9, 24, the Roman centurion whose son, he was engaged in uncontrollable acts of self-harm that threatened to drown him or burn him alive. This Roman officer who wasn't of Jesus' culture nor kind, but had the presence of mind to know that a man's honest and humble admission and struggle with faith was the only way to claim the keys to the kingdom because without naming your current location, you can never get to your desired location. Uh, this soldier from another army had the urgency and faith of his situation that he confessed what was necessary for his salvation by saying, I believe, oh Lord, but help uh, my unbelief. Caught up in that incredibly truthful yet painful phrase, I believe, help my unbelief, is simultaneously a statement of how much the man's faith in Jesus' grace, mercy, and the desperation for healing power are alone sufficient to meet his and his son's desperate need while also standing as an admission that often in our most urgent hour of need, our faith might be far from perfect but only falls short due to our fear and our doubt. Our fear of lies and our doubt of truth. And these fears, urgencies of faith reflect that even in a world where you are hated for the skin you're in, or one in which my Nana would say, a world in which you realize that not all skin folk are kin folk, huh? and not all kin folk are kind. That fierce urgency of faith is a blessed assurance that in the midst of our crisis, it's where Christ is. Christ, resting us from the catharsis of our complacency and loosing us from the stronghold of monstrous mediocrity or the menacing molehills of microaggressions. As Sweet Honey and the Rock reminds us in the lyrics of Ella's song, the fierce urgency of faith reminds us that we who believe in freedom cannot rest. That means that we must come out of our favorite hiding places 
within Ivy League hallways or stained glass walls lined with pious pews or corpus, uh, corporate boardrooms and high posts of privilege wherein any one of us, look at your neighbor and say, any one of us, can get cat called out at Club Shay Shay. Don't get cat called. <laughs> or played out like Claudine Gay. We cannot bask in the privilege of our class, nor the arrogance of innocence. Likewise, those of us who have been marginalized, shut out, cut off, and told, or showed that our lives don't matter, we can no longer wait to be affirmed or emancipated and we can no longer bend to the condition of our oppression, making the vice of patience in the face of persecution a virtue. For as King stated, there is a fierce urgency of now that insists we can no longer wait for injustice because oppression just won't fade away. And we who believe in freedom cannot rest and that impatience should have already begun. As I close, let us shed the paralysis of analysis that has been our modern day sackcloth of ashes. And instead, let us like Angela Davis say, no longer will I accept the things I cannot exchange, that I cannot change. I'm going to change those things I can never accept. Let us give thanks by paying it forward. Let us offer to God an acceptable worship of our work with reverence and awe for our true and eternal King, our God, is a consuming fire that blazes a trail by which we prepare from our mountaintops a promised land and a new promised day. We must work the work of the one who sent us while we are still shrouded by night because once the time is right, we must be ready, willing, and able to place our face towards a rising sun of a new day begun. So saints, don't be ain'ts. Lift up your heads, O oh ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and Christ in the midst of your crisis, who is a real and living king, the king of glory shall come in. Who is that king of glory? The Lord God Almighty, the Lord Matty in this battle. Great is his faithfulness our true and eternal king who meets the fierce urgency of our faith if we only trust and believe. Blessings. a faith that enables us to live with hope. We thank God for the prophetic word that we received this morning in the person of the Reverend Dr. Stacy Floyd Thomas. God bless you. And we proclaim that God's word will not return void. And so at this moment, we want to open the doors of the church as the deacons come forward. We want to extend the opportunity to those who feel God's spirit speaking to them now. Today is the day of salvation. If you do not know Jesus and the saving of your sins, say yes now, receive Christ today. And to those who have been coming week after week who tell us how you're a member by extension, that ain't a real category. Why don't you come and accept membership and become a part of this body today? The doors of the church are open. Won't you come? Now 
Now you don't have to be the first. Is there another? God for the one who has said yes to those of you who are online to those of you who are online or just a little shy you can go online to deacons at alfredstreet.org that's deacons with an s at alfredstreet.org and become a part of this body but on this morning we want to thank God for Monica Stellman Stelmonker, who comes on her Christian experience as a member. Monica, on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, we welcome you to membership at Alfred Street Baptist Church. And I believe there's something that God wants to do in this, the life of this church that couldn't start until you said yes today. So we thank God for you and we welcome you. And the deacons will take you in the back for further instruction. God bless you. And now, saints, as we prepare to leave from this place, we want to remind you to join us next Saturday for Seminary Saturdays. We want to thank the male chorus for lifting us up in song, for Brother Skip Pruitt. Thank you so much for letting God use this morning as we prepare to leave from this place. Now may the God of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, the God of Isaac and Rebekah, the God of Jacob and Leah and Rachel, direct your steps, make your paths straight, fill your mouths with good things, and lead you to that good and promised land. and serve the Lord.
housing. Welcome to Alfred Street. Whether you're worshiping with us online or in person, we want to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience. Now, here are the upcoming announcements for this week. We know that these are difficult and challenging times. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our online worship services and remain faithful in your giving online via our Alfred Street website, ASBC app, and on our text messaging system. If you have any questions about giving, please feel free to email our finance department at finance at alfredstreet.org. If you're interested in becoming a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons with an S at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or on our ASBC app. Alfred Street family and friends, get ready. Seek 2024 is coming. That's right. Beginning January 22nd through February 11th, our own Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley will lead Alfred Street in our annual church-wide corporate fast known as Seek 2024. Seek is a 21-day spiritual fast providing guidance to Christians from all around the world on how to practice self-discipline and to focus their entire attention on God. Again, Seek 2024 will commence on Monday, January 22nd and will end on Saturday, February 11th. Online registration is now open. Don't wait. Go ahead and pre-register today so you can join nearly 5,000 2024 seekers who have already pre-registered for our amazing fast and spiritual journey. This will ensure that you'll be ready to commence our fast on January 22nd. Be sure to visit our website, eBlast, or any of our social media platforms to register yourself, your family, friends, or colleagues now. We invite everyone to join us on this journey as we seek the face of God with our 2024 theme, I Thirst. During this time, participants will be able to choose a physical, social, technological, and or financial fast. Everyone will have an opportunity to participate in our daily prayers, which will commence on the morning of January 22nd. A devotional journal filled with thought-provoking passages related to scripture will also be available for download from the ASBC website once Seek 2024 begins. Pastor Wesley will curate a special Seek 2024 music playlist, which will be available to download from our website. And new for 2024, we'll be introducing an exercise component, a prayer walk every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. crossing the Woodrow Wilson Bridge in Alexandria, Virginia. Last year, Seek 2023 attracted nearly 12,000 participants. We look forward to connecting with you all through our Seek 2024 fast. Alfred Street's January Seminary Saturday Bible Study is in full effect. We invite everyone in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area to join us in person and or online every Saturday in January at Alfred Street Baptist Church from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon to hear from one of the nation's dynamic scholars. This Saturday, January 20th, Jonathan Katub, international human rights attorney, author and founder of the Palestinian Human Rights, al Haq, and closing out our seminary Saturday on January 27th will be the Reverend Dr. May Ellis Cannon, Executive Director of Churches for Middle East Peace. She will present the history of mischief making and prophetic witness of American Christian perspectives towards the Holy Land. We look forward to seeing everyone in person and or online for one of our January Seminary Saturdays Bible Study Sessions. Alfred Treat's Come As You Are Experience, also known as Kaya, led by our own Reverend Dr. Ty Jones, presents their 2024 Vision Board Party. Please join our Kaya family and friends as they collectively prepare for Seek 2024 and the upcoming year. They're casting their visions with a fun and exciting fellowship event on Thursday, January 18th from 7 to 8 p.m. This exciting event will occur in person at the Rosette Tab Graham Multipurpose Room of Alfred Street Baptist Church located at 301 South Alfred Street. Please note that this event will not stream live. All are welcome to attend. For questions, email kaya at alfredstreet.org. Alfred Street's Missions and Outreach Department is seeking licensed barbers to volunteer monthly at one of our local homeless shelters. The time of your commitment would be from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. for a minimum of one Saturday per month. All barbers must be licensed with their own tools. If interested, please contact missions at alfredstreet.org for details. 
Alfred Street Sports Ministry would like to present the newly formed ASBC Chess Club to our congregation. We invite everyone with an interest in chess to join us for their initial in-person experience on Wednesday, January 17th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in the 301 Church Building, room number 315. Chess is different from any other sporting event or game. The infinite possibilities of moves make it a quest for the players and there's no limit to your creativity in the game. If you want to learn all of the winning moves, join the newly formed ASBC Chess Club and prepare for a mental duel battle, fellowship, and fun. Visit our website for more info or email sports at alfredstreet.org. Alfred Street's Fay Gunn Savage Tutorial Ministry presents the 2024 Scholarship Workshop on Wednesday, January 17th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. for a virtual Zoom experience. We're sharing information on how to get money for college. We're calling all students and parents grades 9 through 12. Join us virtually to learn how to get more money for college. Register online today to secure your place for the Scholarship Workshop by award-winning scholarship expert Marianne Raggins. Again, Join us virtually on Wednesday, January 17th at 6.30 p.m. for this important event. Once registered, you'll receive your secure Zoom link via email at least 24 hours before the event. Our January 2024 Pastor's Pick for Alfred Street's Book of the Month is Soul Care in African American Practice by author Dr. Barbara L. Peacock. In the midst of our hectic, overscheduled lives, caring for the soul is imperative. Now more than ever, we need to pause intentionally and encounter the divine. As we prepare for our 21-day fast, Seek, this book will illustrate a journey of prayer, spiritual direction, and soul care from an African-American perspective. Be sure to purchase a copy of this book from your favorite retailer. Are you looking for an incredible opportunity to share your musical talents? If so, look no further. Alfred Street Sanctified Symphony Orchestra is thrilled to announce that they are recruiting talented musicians like you to join their harmonious family. They're calling for all musicians to join them every Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Send an email to sanctifiedsymphony at alfredstreet.org if interested. They can't wait to welcome you into the Alfred Street Baptist Church Sanctified Symphony Orchestra. Hey, Alfred Street. Versus is back in stock. Our Versus team has been working around the clock to create another batch of our popular Versus Bible-based trivia card game, and they're now available for purchase. That's right. Purchase your set of Versus cards today before we sell out again. Visit our website or ASBC app and be the first to get your hands on Versus, a Bible-based trivia game by Alfred Street Baptist Church. Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling, in conjunction with the Health and Well-Being Recovery Ministry, present a bi-weekly peer support session virtually via Zoom. That's every first and third Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit our website for the Zoom link information. The Recovery Ministry peer support sessions will provide a safe and confidential environment to confront addictions, compulsive behaviors, and issues that interfere with a renewed relationship with God. Email recovery at alfredstreet.org for details. Calling all parents and guardians of children, youth, and teens, Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministries are back. We're currently accepting registrations for Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground. Visit our website to register your child or youth today. Alfred Street invites everyone to join the Joyce K. Peterson Handbell Ringers. They are thrilled to announce that their ensemble recruitment is now open. If you have a passion for music and a heart for worship, we invite you to be a part of this harmonious journey. If you can read music and are eager to contribute your talents to a musical ministry that touches souls, this is your moment to shine. For more info and to express your interest, please email handbell at alfredstreet.org. Our Faith Savage Gun Tutorial Ministry has a new home online. Communicate, learn, and stay informed all in one place. Visit our new webpage and check us out today at alfredstreet.org. Email tutorial at alfredstreet.org for details. Our ASBC Village Study Guide is now available on the website to download. Be sure to check out a copy if you want to go deeper with Pastor Wesley's sermon prepared for you by the Villages of Alfred Street team. The guide is available online at alfredstreet.org. We invite everyone to join us for daily prayer call at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. 
Join us in prayer and praise Monday through Friday only by dialing 425-436-6277, access code 246-114-POUND sign. Again, that's 425-436-6277, access code 246-114-POUND sign. Our new prayer line number will accommodate up to 2,000 participants. However, once we reach capacity, we will continue to offer the playback option. Call our playback number anytime after 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time each day, Monday through Friday, and you'll be able to replay the prayer call that you missed. To reach the playback line, please dial 425-436-6278 and enter the access code 246114-POUND sign. Please note that this is not a toll-free number and therefore, depending on your phone carrier, rates may apply. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward weekly radio broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. For more information on these and all the exciting events taking place here at Alfred Street, please log on to alfredstreet.org.